The field of stem cell biology is vast and fascinating. There's lots that scientists know, and lots they don't. And the existence of unknowns within a scientific field is music to the ears of greedy companies. Companies that take advantage of patients in need and in pain. This means there are many illegitimate stem cell clinics that use various different stem cell types. But one of the most popular ones they use are mesenchymal stem cells. And there's a good reason why. The mesenchymal stem cell, or MSC field, has been a subject of debate for a long time now within the scientific community. So what makes these cells so controversial and what can they really do? After reading hundreds of pages of scientific papers and interviewing experts, I feel like I have some answers. In this two-part series, we're going to dig in, debunk the junk science, and see what's real according to a variety of different scientists. In the first episode, which you're watching now, we're going to talk about the scientific drama surrounding MSCs, what they are, and what they should be called. In the second episode, which you can watch right here, you'll learn about the science behind how MSCs work, clinical trials using these cells, and what the future might look like for the field. Let's get into it. Before we can get anywhere, though, we need to answer a seemingly easy question. What even are mesenchymal stem cells? Let's start with the stem cell part of the name. At its most basic, the definition of a stem cell is actually really simple. The cell needs to fulfill two criteria. Number one, being able to specialize or differentiate into other cell types. Think of stem cells as children. Children are a blank slate at the beginning of their lives and could choose any career path they'd like. But as time goes on and children change due to their experiences and surroundings, they specialize into a career path. Number two, being able to self-renew asymmetrically. This means that when a stem cell self-renews, one of its daughter cells will be a stem cell while the other will be a more specialized cell. On to the other part of the term, mesenchymal. Mesenchymal means cells or tissues that are related to the mesenchyme. And the mesenchyme in an embryo consists of, quote, loosely packed cells from which bone, cartilage, muscle, and other mesenchymal tissues develop. Putting the two parts of the term together, mesenchymal stem cells, or MSCs, are unspecialized cells that can turn into cell types related to bone, cartilage, fat, and perhaps muscle. But if defining the word stem cell and the word mesenchymal is so easy, what makes MSCs so controversial that 38% of MSC scientists think we still lack, quote, an understanding of MSC biology and function? Well, this lack of understanding is in part due to tricky naming practices. And here lies a story of scientific discourse and perhaps some of the most heated language you'll hear researchers use. You know what'd be cool? If we could ask the originator of the mesenchymal stem cell name, Arnold Kaplan, to explain why he chose this term. Wait, we can? Well, according to a paper he wrote in 2017, quote, I chose this term because mesenchyme is a type of tissue characterized by loosely associated cells that lack polarity and are surrounded by a large ECM. Don't worry about the ECM or polarity stuff, that's beyond the scope of this video. Because of their in vitro multipotency, that means the cell's ability to specialize into some other cell types in a lab, and clonability, I provocatively call them stem cells, to appeal especially to the orthopedic community. So we have the originator of the term saying he picked the name to be provocative rather than basing it on rigorous scientific proof that MSCs are in fact stem cells, taking a bit of an innocent until proven guilty or 
stem cell until proven not a stem cell approach. Now, I don't mean to be unfair. Scientists make mistakes. It's part of the scientific process. Kaplan has since called on the scientific community to stop referring to MSCs as stem cells. He's written, quote, I was wrong. I take back the name I gave these hugely important cells, end quote. But that begs the question, why can't we call MSCs stem cells? Looking at our two criteria for stem cells, it looks like when the data is put under a microscope, pun intended, MSCs might fail on both fronts. The first issue arises because we don't have great evidence that MSCs can specialize or differentiate inside the body, what we call in vivo. There are some studies that seem to show that MSCs do in fact specialize in the body and that the impairment of MSCs leads to dysfunction. However, this doesn't necessarily have to be through the differentiation of the MSCs. In fact, many other studies show that when MSCs are injected into patients, the MSCs themselves quickly die, making it unlikely the cells are the ones exerting beneficial effects to the patients. MSCs are now mainly thought to work through other mechanisms, which we'll get into later. Also important to note is that it's been well established that MSCs can differentiate in a petri dish in the lab called in vitro, even though their differentiation in the body is debated. So what about self renewal? Here we once again run into an issue of insufficient evidence. As far as I can tell, there is some evidence of in vivo self-renewal of MSCs, particularly of those in the bone marrow. However, since their discovery, MSCs have been reportedly found in many, many tissues, something we'll discuss more shortly. And there doesn't seem to be a ton of evidence for the in vivo self-renewal of all of these MSCs. This may all seem a bit confusing, but I found it helpful to think of the distinction between MSCs inside the body and those outside of it. They aren't necessarily acting the same way, but you don't have to take my word for it. My name is Ed Horowitz. I am the co-director of the Marcus Center for Pediatric Advanced Cellular Therapies here at Emory University and the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. It's our children's hospital. I'm a pediatrician. Uh, I am the Marcus Professor of Cellular Therapy and the Professor of Pediatrics. Well, um, the reason why it kind of matters is because certain names imply biologic functions. And, and I, my personal opinion is we don't understand enough about MSCs. And I don't mean MSCs in the body where they come from. I mean the cells that we take out of the body and expand in the culture, the therapeutic cells. What are they really? What do they really do? And, and, and um, it's still a little bit unclear. So my personal preference is to use names that don't imply a particular function. Okay, so maybe MSCs shouldn't be called stem cells. Maybe a rose by any other name doesn't smell as sweet in the world of science. But who cares? Does naming really matter? Yes, because as we talked about in the beginning of the video, Unknowns and lack of clarity allow bad actors to shine. This is the real story of Carmen Bono, an Italian salesman who had suffered from a stroke and was sadly partially paralyzed. He was, naturally, looking for ways to get better. And this is where Davide Venoni came in with his seemingly miraculous claim. He could take MSCs from a patient's hip and using alcohol and vitamin A, differentiate those into neurons. Sounds too good to be true, and it was. Through several meetings with Benoni and his other seemingly legit collaborators, Bono was led to believe that for the low, low price of 21,600 euros, this was in 2008, by the way, he could be completely cured. He received his supposed treatment at a beauty center 
and was later watching TV at a hotel that was included as part of said treatment. This is when, shortly after the injection, Vona had an epileptic attack for the very first time. He was saved by a friend who took him to a hospital quickly. Since then, Benoni has denied having treated Vona as well as other victims using stem cells and has allegedly tried to get Vona to sign a release form after the incident. To be clear, this is not meant to suggest that MSCs don't have any therapeutic potential or are unsafe. In fact, there is plenty of evidence that when administered correctly under appropriate supervision, MSCs are safe. Of course, this wouldn't be at a beauty center, for instance, with no appropriate guidance. Instead, this story shows that when there is confusion within a field, bad actors may take advantage of patients. This is one of the big reasons scientists have been fighting about MSCs for a long time. Despite the fact that the naming of MSCs has been a contentious issue for decades now, there was quite a bit of scientific drama beginning in 2017 specifically with regards to the naming. To make things a bit more interesting as we go over this and, and learn about all these events, it's time for a boxing match of ideas and research. I'm your announcer, Parman. Let's begin. Not missing a beat, it looks like we have our first swing from the anti-mesenchymal stem cell name side. What do they have to say? Remember Kaplan's 2017 paper? Well, in it, he also suggests new terminology, medicinal signaling cells. So he'd also suggested this name back in 2010. He explains that this new name is better because it shows that MSC's positive therapeutic or medicinal effects are mainly through their signaling activity. More specifically, it's thought that MSCs secrete certain biological factors that travel relatively short distances and affect nearby cells beneficially. So there's also some evidence that these factors travel longer distances. This short distance communication is called paracrine signaling. And Kaplan isn't alone in supporting this terminology. Tommy S. DeWind and colleagues also support Kaplan in using the term medicinal signaling cells. That was a pretty intense hit, but the other side's not giving up, and it looks like we have another hit. That's because scientists like Sidharaju V. Borigoda and colleagues believe that the stem cell name should stay. In response to Kaplan's 2017 paper, and using some of the most heated yet respectful language to make your scientists use, they write, quote, this paracrine-centric viewpoint of the MSC is grossly oversimplified and obfuscates a growing body of work indicating stem slash progenitor and paracrine functions of MSCs are interdependent, end quote. Progenitor cells, by the way, are similar to stem cells but have more limited specialization and self-renewal abilities. To support this claim, the scientists cite examples, including one, where exposing MSCs to certain conditions affected their differentiation as well as improved their positive effects in rat models of traumatic brain injury. Wait a second, what's this? We've never seen this before. Another member just jumped into the ring and we have three boxers now. The new boxer is the International Society for Cell and Gene Therapy, or ISCT's Mesenchymal Stromal Cell Committee. And they suggest using the term mesenchymal stromal cell, as you may have guessed by the committee name. In their 2019 recommendations, the ISCT stresses that there is a difference between mesenchymal stromal cells and mesenchymal stem cells. So they first suggested the terminology back in 2005. We've already defined what characterizes a stem cell, and we'll look at the ISCT's specific criteria for mesenchymal stem cells soon. But what about mesenchymal stromal cells? Whereas mesenchymal stem cell is a more specific term, mesenchymal stromal cells are characterized by their ability to secrete factors and affect the immune system. Wow, the medicinal signaling cell side 
did not like the ISDT's take. Kaplan has said that the ISDT is wrong in calling for the use of the term mesenchymal stromal cell, taking specific issue with the stromal part of the name. He's written that the ISCT committee, quote, imagined incorrectly that the origin of MSCs from a variety of tissues was the connective layer of that tissue, end quote. That's where the name stromal comes from. Instead, Kaplan writes that there's evidence of MSC's origin being parasites, cells which are present along the walls of capillaries. And because of this, the stromal name is incorrect. But as you've come to expect of the MSC field, there's contending evidence showing that the origin of MSCs is not parasites. Looks like our contestants and boxers are pretty tired. So let's take a break and instead look at some other evidence about the naming of MSCs. In a 2019 worldwide survey of MSC scientists, most scientists preferred the mesenchymal stem cell name, while many others preferred mesenchymal stromal cells, and some even liked multipotent stromal cells. Looking at the wider scientific community, there are over 15,000 articles on PubMed, a scientific article database, with mesenchymal stem cell in the title or abstract, and 2,000 on PubMed with the name mesenchymal stromal cell. Despite the popularity of the stem cell name, many scientists have opted to adopt the stromal cell name instead. To avoid confusion, I'll be using the acronym MSC moving forward, which is one thing scientists seem to be able to agree on. By now, we've seen how confusion within science can have a lot of negative effects on patients, but it can make performing science by scientists really difficult too. Imagine I ask you if you want an apple. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's not an orange. It's not a pear. It's not a peach. But what if we decide to loosen our definitions and start referring to any red fruits as apples? Now I could be talking about an apple and you, a peach, and still be calling them the same thing. Communicating would definitely become a lot more difficult. Bringing this back to MSCs and away from the delicious world of fruit, the MSC naming issue can lead to pretty big problems. If the only issue was that scientists were preferring different terms but referring to the exact same population of cells, this wouldn't be such a big problem. The bigger problem is that scientists may be using the same name to refer to slightly different cell types. We're back to the apple and peach dilemma. Remember our friend the ISCT? They recommend pretty specific criteria for identifying or characterizing MSCs, though the criteria aren't always followed. They include three main points. Number one, MSCs should be plastic adherents, meaning quite literally that the cells stick to the plastic where they're grown in in a lab. Number two, MSCs should express certain markers and lack certain ones. Think of these markers as flags that tell scientists what type of cell they may be looking at. Number three, MSCs should be able to differentiate or specialize into three different types of cells. The first type of cell is an adipocyte or fat cell. The second type of cell is chondrocyte or cartilage cells. And the last type of cell is osteoblast or bone cells. Unfortunately, about 30% of studies on or clinical trials using MSCs don't use these criteria to validate their cells or don't even include any data on how they characterize their cells. According to a 2018 commentary in Nature by Douglas Sipp and colleagues, quote, the wildly varying reports have helped MSCs to acquire a near magical, all things to all people quality in the media and in the public mind, end quote. And they're definitely not wrong. We've already seen how the mystique around MSCs 
can be damaging through the story of Carmen Bona. But this isn't just happening outside of the US, but within it too. And it's happening quite frequently with MSD specifically. A 2016 review article found 351 businesses in the US that were marketing stem cell treatments directly to consumers. 49% of these clinics were using MSCs from the bone marrow, MSCs from fat tissue, non-specific MSCs, or both MSCs from bone marrow and fat tissue. These clinics were claiming to be able to do miraculous and unproven things with these stem cells. And they were using the mystique around MSCs to seem more legit. In an interview with the scientist, Sip, co-author of the Nature Commentary, said that, quote, if you decide to search for what mesenchymal stem cells are capable of, you can find a paper that's published and is searchable using Medline, a database of life science related info to superficially back up your claims. So the authors of the Nature Commentary recommend ways in which they think the situation could be improved. First up, they recommend more rigorously characterizing MSCs. Second, they suggest that organizations that put together scientific conferences and meetings should reconsider whether research about MSCs can be presented at those meetings. As well, journal editors and grant agencies should employ more scrutiny when it comes to MSC research. In response to the commentary, the ISCT committee wrote in a paper, quote, we feel that the editorial thread pursued conflates the activities of medical tourism outfits Medical tourism refers to traveling to another country to receive medical care or procedures, procedures that often aren't approved in the country the patient lives in. With IRB sanctioned and regulator licensed clinical trials conducted by ethically minded industrial and academic entities, end quote. IRB, by the way, stands for Institutional Review Boards, which have to approve research that's proposed to ensure it's safe and ethical. Anyways, it seems like we're going in circles with all these naming and scientific arguments. So let's address the fact that some scientists think it doesn't matter what we call MSCs. The scientific community should overall move away from the field, or at least monitor it very carefully. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, some researchers are very well in favor of researching MSCs, but also don't believe the naming is a huge concern. Sharagim Tuchpaksh put it best in a paper which actually wasn't about MSCs, but terminology in the stem cell field more broadly when he said, quote, ultimately, what's in a name? A lot, but often very little, end quote. So to answer the question we first began with, why are MSCs so controversial? I enlisted the help of an expert to help some things up. My name is Ian Fernandez. Uh, I'm a postdoctoral fellow with McEwen Stem Cell Institute. Uh, and I work primarily with Dr. Gordon Keller, uh, but I also work with Dr. Michael LaPlan uh, to a lesser degree. My area of expertise is largely in uh, cardiac stem cell, bi uh, stem cell biology to direct the, these differentiations into the cardiac lineage. Before we hear Dr. Fernandez's answer to a question that sums things up, a quick disclaimer. Uh, everything said in this video is uh, my own opinion, um, based on my own empirical evidence and what I read in literature and does not reflect that of my institution uh, or the McEwen Stem Cell Institute. Um, so using ChatGPT, um, I found that the reason MSCs are controversial largely falls into five buckets. Um, lack of standardization, regulatory concerns, safety concerns slash unproven treatments, and um, ethical considerations. So if MSCs are derived from embryonic stem cells. And then lastly, variable outcomes. And this is the only part that, um, the only kind of research I did is chat GPT. The rest <laughs> was all me and papers. Um, so would you agree with these five buckets or anything you'd add or remove? Uh, I largely agree. In recent years, probably due to the uh, behest of the FDA, 
who has to yet uh, approve a product of this nature, um, there needs to be better rigor in characterizing these cells. To standardize and to really define what these cells are, I think requires more effort to be done and really understand what the phenotype is and just how transient this phenotype is. If I take uh, stromal cells from subcutaneous in the abdomen versus that of the leg versus that of the arm, are they equivalent in their nature? And I don't think there's a definitive answer to that. And I think that's something that really needs to be addressed first before we can say we have something that's really standardized. The safety concerns, I think, really just come from the uncertainty about what is going on. As really, I think there's been ample amount of safety evidence done where we don't see um, negative sequelae come from uh, administration of these, uh, of these treatments. However, I mean, the lack of characterization in itself provides a concern. So the ethical considerations, so if mesenchymal cells are derived from embryonic stem cells, so do, through a quick literature review, I saw there are some papers that are using these mesenchymal stromal cells from embryonic stem cells. And largely what it is, is pushing these embryonic stem cells into a mesodermal fate, and then taking them and characterizing them based on the markers that were uh, outlined in, the, in this uh, paper, so these general mesenchymal markers. Whether these are anywhere close to that of which we see in the adult, I don't think there's any proper evidence to say how we can compare them. Thanks for watching the first episode of this mini-series. Watch the second episode here to dive deeper into how MSCs are being used, especially in clinical trials, and the science behind how they work. See you there!